Hey everybody, and welcome to today's tattoo educational video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about packing solid black with a mag. Now, packing in large fields of solid black when you first start tattooing can be really intimidating and it can be really challenging. So today, I'm gonna to be showing you some tips and techniques that I use, and hopefully it will help you out too. Now, before we hop into the tattooing part, I wanna share with you this little visual. Okay, so we are going to pretend that this piece of cardboard is the skin you're working with and this stabby tool is your needle. Now, your goal is to fully saturate the skin with solid black without causing unnecessary damage to the skin. That can lead to long healing times, scabbing, scarring, infection, just things that you don't want to deal with. Ew. So, follow along. So, as you can see here, the holes are not causing damage to our skin. The skin still has structural integrity. Like, I'm pushing on this and it's not collapsing. The skin is going to heal great if you go over it with one pass. If you get it in, first try, this is what you're looking at. Now, say you miss a little spot, that's fine. You can go over it one more time. You know, you push a few more holes into the skin and it's still got structural integrity. It's not falling apart. So now say you didn't get it saturated in the first pass and the second pass was also a fail. You now have skin that is irritated, but you still have to go over it again to get it fully saturated because it just looks bloody and gross. So let's go over our skin one more time. Okay, so now we've gone over our skin one more time. As you can see, some parts over here are still okay, but also there's a really big hole right here in the skin. Now, when you're tattooing, it's not gonna be a giant hole. I mean, I hope it's not a giant hole like this, but down at a really small cellular level, if you're causing a lot of damage. This causes scarring. This causes a lot of scabbing when it's healing. It prolongs healing times, and it gives you a risk of infection while it's healing. So this one still might be okay. You might need a little touch up in this area, but overall, this is still okay. The skin is still all together. But say you didn't get it all in this time, and you have to go over it again. Okay, so you've gone over this like four or five times. Now your skin is chewed up. It looks like hamburger meat. This is not going to heal well. This is going to scar your client. You're going to have to touch this up and it's just no good. So when I talk about one pass solid black or solid color, this is why you do not want beat up skin. You want it intact and you want it minimally damaged. Now let's get on to the rest of the video. Now, this is what I'm saying. What I want to get is minimal red, minimal skin damage. There's barely any swelling. I mean, it is a little irritated because it's on that back part of the arm, but overall, it looks really smooth. For anyone wondering, here is the equipment that I used. The Axis Valhalla at the 4.2 stroke at 10 volts. Big Sleep's Killer B Black and the Needle Jig 27 and 15 curved mag. I like to use a longer stroke when packing solid color and solid black because the longer the stroke, the harder the hit. The shorter the stroke, the softer the hit. The hard hit helps the ink get in more quickly and efficiently. And for those of you that aren't familiar with stroke, stroke is the distance that the needle is traveling up and down. This is not to be confused with your needle hang, and that is how far your needle is coming out of your tube. The Killer Bee Black is my favorite black overall. You don't have to use it, that's just what I use. And finally, for the mags, I use a 27 and a 15 curved mag. I like to use the largest curved mags that the design will allow me to use. The reason being is more area is covered more quickly, and that means that there's less pain for the client. Also, if you are using a liner to fill in a huge field of black like this, chances are you're going to end up beating the skin up and it's going to heal terribly. The first thing I do is make sure that the needles are hanging out of my tube far enough. You don't want to just have your needles peeking out of the tube. You won't be able to fully saturate and you'll end up just going over the same spot too many times. I did a whole video explaining needle hang if you're interested. If not, I usually hang mine out about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit less than that. Once I have my needle set, I set my voltage. Now, every machine and every person is different. You need to pick a voltage that matches your hand speed that works with your machine. For the Valhalla, I usually run it around 10 volts for this kind of thing. I also have a video fully explaining voltage if you want to check that out. But in short, I want to be able to feel the punch of my machine when I'm packing solid black. If you have it running too fast, I found that the skin doesn't receive the ink as well. But once again, that is all up to how you personally work. When in doubt, start at a low voltage and work your way up. Before I start to tattoo a solid area, I come up with a plan on how I'm going to fill in that area. If you've ever cut the grass or vacuumed your house, you know that you can't just randomly run around your yard with a lawnmower or run around your house with a vacuum and expect the grass to be all cut or the dirt to be vacuumed up. There's usually some type of pattern involved in these activities. Same with solid black. I like to look at it as like a grid, basically. I'll fill in a certain area starting at a line heading towards an endpoint, and I'll work my way across the area like that. 
This tattoo in the video I'm showing you is on the back of the tricep, but it's closer to the inside of the arm, which makes this a really difficult spot to get solid saturation because the skin is super bouncy. Since it is a really bouncy area, I'm stretching the skin really hard. Making sure that the skin is properly stretched in tattooing is always very important, but it's extra important in these types of spots. If the skin isn't stretched well, that means that the needles won't be able to penetrate well, which then means you basically just damage the skin a little bit and have to go over the same spot again, which we already have spoke about and it can become a problem. Once I have the skin properly stretched, I place my needles onto the skin on top of the line that I'm working on. Yes, I said on top of the line. Reason being, if you try to put it right next to the line, chances are you're gonna have a gap of skin between your line and your solid fill. Placing your needles in the middle of your line prevents this, but do not hang out on top of your line because that will damage the skin. That is just the starting point or the ending point to the solid black. As soon as my needles hit the skin, I'm moving my needles in one of two motions. Either I'll do little circles or I'll do a back and forth motion. Both work, it just depends on what area of the tattoo you're working on and what that area will allow you to do. If you're in a tighter area where there isn't much room for small circles, I'll use the back and forth motion. When doing that back and forth motion, I'll slightly turn my mag so then that way the needles are stacked behind each other. And that way I won't get individual needle marks of the mag and it will just be a solid black area. In a larger area, I'll use small circles along with the back and forth motion and that just kind of depends on my mood. When you're trying to get an area of a tattoo solidly saturated with black, you want to keep your needles in the skin at the same depth the entire time. If you feel the vibration of the skin fluctuating, that means that you're going at different depths and your work is gonna become blotchy and it won't heal well. I'm looking for a steady vibration feeling in the skin the entire time I'm tattooing. And when it comes to how far your needles go into the skin, that's something I can't really illustrate to you or explain to you over a video. That's just something that you and your mentor are gonna to have to go over together. But overall, I never really think about how deep I'm going. I just pay attention to the frequency of the vibration of the skin. It becomes second nature, even though in the beginning, that's all you think about. Practice being consistent and consistently practice. Oh, I like that a lot. That could be like a slogan or something. But either way, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. If not, I hope that you have a good day.